Hey guys. So I, um, in my interest in electricity, um, took it upon myself to order some uh, uh, neodymium or neodymium uh, magnets. And I have never experimented with these before, and they are scary strong. So um, to my dismay, uh, the box that I got them in literally had them in a Ziploc bag all stuck together. And the uh, grade of these batteries, or not <laughs> these batteries, of these uh, magnets was N38 to all the way up to N52, the highest uh, grade, I think, that uh, magnets can have. Um, and they aren't huge, um, but they are definitely on the, um, you know, I'd say probably the medium size. Because um, I didn't want to have like really small ones that couldn't be much use in... Um, you know, various um, electrical inductive uh, type experiments, things of that nature. Um, so I had my old wood box that I had from some, uh, some Christmas gift a while back, and I thought that this would be a great container to store them in um, because um, I quickly realized the effort needed to separate the, the uh, uh, magnets was tremendous. Um, in fact, my fingertips were just dying by the end. So what I did is I uh, spent about like two hours um, yesterday uh, preparing some uh, ways to store magnets um, because I couldn't find many examples online of what people did when they received a bag of let's just say 20 neodymium magnets stuck together. How do you deal with it? Because once you pop one off and you, you play with it, where do you put it when you're done? Do you try to stick it back on the clump because it'll smash in and shatter? So, bearing that in mind, uh, <laughs> this looks kind of like a, uh, you know, some sort of uh, not so uh, <laughs> not so pleasant uh, casing here. But really, these are um, these are kind of separated um, in about two inch increments or so, maybe an inch. Um, and inside of each one of these, I will take just this as an example. Um, this is kind of my, my way that I store these. It's just a rag. And um, what I've done is I've built a little plywood housing. And if I, so all four of these come off and inside is a bunch of spacers that house the uh, various magnets. So what I will do is I will take these guys off just to give um, you know viewers out there an idea of one way to hopefully um, help kind of manage um, storing these kinds of magnets because honestly these are kind of frightening to deal with sometimes they uh, they have some tremendous strength behind them and can literally crush your finger if you're not careful so in this particular case this is a smaller collection of magnets than the other ones, but you get the idea. So I've literally shoved a uh, nice big chunk of plywood between each type of magnet, um, at least in most cases I've kind of, I mean, I guess there's two uh, spherical ones on the ends, but for the most part I've kind of kept them in twos or ones, depending on the kind of magnet that they are. But, um, so if you needed to get to a particular magnet type, you uh, can do so by pulling them apart like so, and then you can pop off one. And when you're ready to like put them back, you just have to snap your pieces together. And that's the idea um, that I had, at least, for how to store these super duper magnets. Um, because trying to put them back into a grouping of just other magnets is a nightmare and you literally cannot control the uh, velocity that these guys want to uh, <laughs> bestow upon your fingertips when they join the or rejoin the group. So um, hopefully this gives you guys an idea of uh, a way to store these. And if anyone has uh, come up with other ingenious ideas, I'm totally interested to uh, to see and or hear, you know, what you guys did. Because I know, um, you know, looking around YouTube, that there are users out there with, you know, those giant, like, 
four or five or even six inch diameter um, disc uh, neodymium magnets that are um, they're just ginormous and uh, literally I would be frightened to have that thing anywhere near um, anything in my house. Um, in fact, as you can tell, I was pretty paranoid um, in setting this up even. Uh, and in fact, even with all of this um, level of protection um, around each one of these containers, when I set them down next to each other, like, you know, put this like right here, I can actually feel a little bit of um, sideways uh, field interruption because you'll notice um, the way these are stored, since they're sticking to one another through the through the shelving um, or the spacing, these are all like north uh, north to south to north to south. So at the end of this entire thing, you've got like north pole on one end, south pole on the other. So on the sides, it's not quite a uh, strong field if you were to look at the magnetic field shape of these magnets. Um, so even with that, you know, bearing that in mind, the weaker fields, you can still, still feel the interaction between these. And thankfully, for neodymium's sake, they are very difficult to demagnetize. So there is little concern with, um, you know, having the ability to, uh, or feeling, you know, the interaction between the fields. It's not going to really harm the magnets. Um, now, since I've got this video going, I will show the uh, one magnet I have. In case you're wondering why I put like a cloth around these, if for some reason there was, you know, two of these slammed together, um, I've read that it's a lot easier to pull these kinds of things apart if there is fabric between things. So uh, I'm just kind of, I'm being like double paranoid here between the, uh, between the wood and the uh, fabric. So, needless to say, um, that's pretty much all there is to storing those, but um, I wanted to show this little guy's stored a little differently than the other ones. I kind of decided to keep him separate because he's my, uh, currently he's my biggest guy. He's not, he's not that big, but he is a um, N52, so he is the highest grade magnet um, that there is. And I think he was like um, an inch diameter. Uh, let's see. Kind of kept him in his original packaging. So yeah, he looks like this. So he's a fairly he's a fairly beefy guy, and he's kind of a darker tint than the other ones that are more um, you know typical chrome. But um, so yeah, a grade N52, and I think he is a inch by like a half inch in uh, diameter this way and thickness that way. So um, I think he had about a pull strength of, I think he was rated at 75 pounds. So um, definitely uh, scary. <laughs> and I know there's, you know, plenty uh, out there that are like rated for up to like a, a thousand pounds or even more. Um, but this is way more than any one person can even like pull apart with their hands. Um, you can try to shear slide them with uh, pieces of wood, but ultimately these are freaking scary to have around devices. In fact, I'm almost paranoid having this near the camera. So anyways, um, hopefully this setup gives people ideas on um, how to store their, their magnets. And I definitely look forward to um, doing some experiments with them. And a couple of the ones that I'm looking forward to um, are definitely related to just um, basic energy harvesting, you know, trying to trying to come to terms with uh, the fundamentals surrounding, um, you know, um, uh, coils of wire and, uh, you know, the, the, the rotation of magnets and how that, you know, generates, um, you know, current and uh, ways to store that or use that. Um, pretty cool stuff. And, um, Another one that I, I'm interested in, so that one I just said was more to do with, um, I think what we would call um, electrical induction, where you're inducing a current via the magnet 
and the motion of the magnet. The other one, of course, would be electromagnets, which are pretty cool, um, which don't, you know, I won't directly be leveraging these, but um, the ideas are very similar in terms of what the end result is. You've got some sort of, you know, soft metal like a chunk of iron and you're wrapping it in wire and um, you're trying to, uh, you know, I guess orient the domains of the uh, piece of metal so that it becomes a magnet, at least while it's, um, you know, charged with the, the current from the, the wire. So, oh, and another thing that's uh, pretty cool, uh, back on topic with magnets, um, I hope um, I will be able to uh, start up a project soon um, that will build, um, I, I will have just like a little tool I can have that will show me the north and south pole of the magnets. Uh, because when you're trying to stick these things together because they're so powerful, it's a little scary sometimes when you're trying to approach, you know, one to the next and you're not sure is it going to stick or is it going to repel. Um, so to have a uh, little tool that you can have to kind of wave it near the end of a magnet to tell you, oh, this is the North Pole or this is the South Pole, that would be very handy. Um, and based on what I've read, uh, you can build one of those using uh, a Hall effect sensor, which is sensitive to the uh, electro, or not the electro, but just the, uh, the magnetic fields of magnets. And it uh, signals which pole is which, I think, by the uh, relative amount of voltage that the Hall effect sensor outputs. But I will definitely have to uh, look into that. So anyways, have fun guys and be safe.